Hey guys, I'm Rachel, I have hamsters, and I just wanted to show you my setups for Oscar over there and Steven. I think I'm just gonna show you Steven for today, but they're basically the same setup. Um, since I've been at my parents' house, um, I did have to reset everybody up in 200 quart bin cages. And so I've been finding ways to get as much packed into as little space as possible. And I figured maybe it'd be helpful to share what I found. Um, so let me zoom out a little bit. I was just doing some cleanup and um, I have a little a few bags around it. But this is the 200 quart bin cage. I will put a link to it down below. The major thing with the 200 quart bin cage is not only do you get a lot of width, it's um, over a, a yard wide. I think it's like 39 inches. You also get a lot of height that's about 17 inches high. So you can do a lot with that. This platform here is the Night Angel 12 inch platform. Um, so you can get a really tall platform in the 200 quart bin cage, but with a 100 quart bin cage, it's not that tall. Um, I actually have a 100 quart bin cage uh, on the floor and that was the major difference is it, it kind of cuts off right here. Um, I did get those smaller bin cages for traveling with, um, so I could bring them here. But now that we're here, I have them set up in these bigger bins. Um, so let me just talk you through what I have going on in here. I'll start over here. So this is the Night Angel acrylic wheel, and I actually just bought a Night Angel adhesive track and applied it. Steven has had some bumblefoot I've noticed lately. I don't know if it's because he's getting a little older, um, but I have found that, well, I'm thinking that the cork will help kind of reduce inflammation in his foot pads um, and kind of like, you know, absorb some of that impact. Um, I do just wash it and clean it like I do with any other wheel. Um, so I use soap and water just like normal and let it dry. It just takes a little longer to dry. Um, it is on his six room small multi-chamber hide and that's probably where he's sleeping right now. I recently purchased this cork topper for it, which is really great to not only protect the hide, but also um, it helps him grip to get on because I noticed he was having trouble getting out of his enclosure or up from the sides. Even though it's not a very big drop, um, it is a little slippery, the wood on its own. So the cork does help and it's fairly inexpensive. Um, over here I have, this is a freestanding water bottle holder. I love these things. They are from Love Drizzle Studio. That's an Etsy shop. Um, and I just like them because they work really well with these Petco water bottles. Um, I go back and forth on which water bottle I prefer. The Night Angel ones are nice, but sometimes they're a little sticky. This one is really free flowing and I can tell it's very easy for them to get water, although they do sometimes leak. So I do have to kind of keep an eye on it. Um, I will say before we go any further, I have his, his six room multi-chamber on stilts. I believe I have the five and a half inch stilts, maybe six inches. So it's a fair amount of bedding down there that he gets. And then for extra enrichment over here, I have some seed sprays from various different places. I believe these are from Hope's Healthy Treats. I've been trying out a few places. This uh, millet spray is also. I have this little foraging pumpkin from a Hungry Hammy shop and you can put seeds inside of it so they can kind of try to dig at it to get the seeds. This is a half chewed whimsy. And you can see there's some flower mix here that is from Redwood Grove. This is it right here. I got this with um, my spoiled hammy box, which I got as a gift for my birthday. I got three months of it. So I have a bunch of little Redwood Grove treats around. Um, going from here, I have this long Night Angel bridge that goes up to this 12 inch Night Angel platform. And that platform doesn't come with a cork that fits it, this is pulling up a little bit. So I just took some extra wheel adhesives and kind of cut it um, just so they'd have a little bit of grip. I could, maybe one day I'll make one that actually exactly matches, but this works for now. It just keeps it from being quite so slippery. And I like to keep a water bowl up there. If I keep the water bowl down here, then little poops tend to fly off his wheel and get in the water bowl. So I find that it's a bit safer up here. Um, right there is a hanging, <laughs> a hanging DIY uh, treat, so he can dig at that and try to get that off. And then I've also sprinkled little bits of banana chips around the cage just for him to find as a little fun treat. Um, you'll see that most of the cage is with KT Clean and Cozy. 
I have used hemp bedding in the past. I found my hamsters don't really love it as much. You can actually see there's some on the bottom there. I didn't replace all of his bedding. Uh, I don't think Steven likes it. I noticed that he doesn't burrow where there's hemp bedding as much. So I just kind of stopped using it with him. And instead I just use it in smaller plastic uh, digging areas so he can dig in it. And he does like to do that, but he does not like to nest in it. All right, so going this way, um, this is a sorghum spray. This is a night angel wood log. I would only recommend this for robos because it has pretty small openings. Um, even a small robo, I don't think uh, maybe a larger robo might get stuck in this. So I would be careful with that. Um, underneath, I have his sand bath and this is in a pretty large Tupperware container. Let's see if I can show it to you. Um, I don't think you can quite fully see it all, but it's one of those, it's actually Rubbermaid. It's a Rubbermaid container. Um, it's the large size. I think it's like five cups or something, six cups. Um, so it's pretty deep. It's got to be at least three and a half or four inches deep. So it gives him a lot of digging room and Steven loves his sand bath. So I like to give him a sand bath and then give him lots of cover. So I have this cork flat kind of, oops, sorry, glare there. I have this cork flat that's over top of it and it gives him kind of a little hidey area there. Um, I gave him a whimsy in there because he likes to chew and then also a little glass jar for him to kind of hang out in. And again, with glass jars, you want to be careful for robos, I think. Um, anything that's wide mouth is probably okay for them, but you do have to be careful if you have a bigger hamster. Definitely you can't use a glass jar like that for a Syrian because they are too big and they will get stuck. Um, one thing I've also been doing lately is using these coffee cup holders from Starbucks. Um, as long as they're clean, my hamsters love to climb on them and they're super lightweight. So it's easy to just put it on top. I don't have to worry about it falling or creating extra weight and they can climb all over it. Um, and then that kind of leads them up here. I have another one under there, if you can see that. There's another one there, so he can go under it or over it. And then I have a medium-sized cork round here um, that he can kind of play in. And I have a fair amount of bedding down there. I would say that's gotta be at least 10 inches. And that might be it. And then of course I have my Wise Cam 3 here. I do find that the wise cam is really helpful in making sure that everybody is happy and healthy. And um, if I don't see them for a day, at least I can check and make sure that they are drinking water and doing all the things that my hamsters hopefully should be. Um, and for cleanup, I use this little vacuum here. Um, I love it for quickly cleaning up little poops around the, uh, the cork there. And I use that on Oscar's cage as well. And yeah, that is, I think that's it. <laughs> um, so for my Robos, you'll notice I don't have a lid. Um, I don't use lids on my, my dwarf hamster cages. If you have a Syrian, you definitely, definitely need a lid. Um, for my Robos, I just make sure that I don't have anything where they can reach. Like this is a pretty big drop there. It's probably five inches or so, and it doesn't touch the side. Um, nothing that they could, could, uh, kind of, kind of get on and, and jump out. I've never seen them jump up. I've only seen him jump sideways. So I haven't had any concern about it. Steven is pretty clumsy and, um, isn't much, honestly, most of the time he's more concerned with being at home than escaping his home. Um, Oscar, I haven't had any worries, but he does seem to be a bit more athletic. He's just over here. So I might, um... I do need to clean up his, his wheel over there. He's got lots of little poops. Um, he does seem to be a bit more athletic, so I might make him like a vaulted lid. It hasn't become an issue yet, and I do watch them at night pretty carefully with the wise cams to make sure that they're not doing anything I need to worry about, um, and they haven't yet, but um, you know, I am prepared if I need to be. So I hope that helps, you know, if you, if you attach things to the side of your bins, that's when you really have to worry about them escaping because they can climb up it and out. And that's really where you get the worries. So I make sure that everything is sort of centrally located and not touching a side. Um, even this wheel, like maybe he could shimmy up here, but it would be pretty hard. I don't think Steven has that ability. <laughs> All right, well, thank you for watching my cage tour. I know somebody um, commented about the sand bath being larger. I agree. This is actually a pretty large sand bath. It's probably like 
uh, I don't know, 10 by 10 or something. It's, it's fairly large under there. You can't quite see all of it. Um, I have experimented in the past of having a really large Pyrex dish up here and putting the wheel on there as well. Um, so I might try to add that in my Robo's cages also. I know I've heard the thing that you're supposed to have at least a third of their cage be sand. And I do agree that they do spend a lot of time in their sand bath. Um, but the problem is I also want to give them a lot of burrowing opportunities. So sometimes just finding the space to have enough sand and have all the other things that they seem to enjoy and find enriching can be tricky. So um, I know that that's not one third of the cage, but it is a goal I'm working towards and hopefully I can add another sand bath here. I'm looking for something that would work in that space, but still allow him to climb up it because it would be a little hard for him to get up there, I think. Anyway. All right, well, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below, and I will list everything that I have in this cage down below also with links. So if you're interested, you can go ahead and check that out. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!